UM Hoops and Inside the Hall do their annual collaboration of ranking the best Big Ten players for Big Ten basketball, and their list is finally out. Now, uh, before we get too much further with this, we were blessed to have the opportunity to work with both Alex and Dylan, Alex from Inside the Hall and Dylan from UM Hoops, for our upcoming Big Ten Top 50 Players Countdown. Those videos are recorded. We're working our way through a bunch that have not been recorded yet. That's the number one reason you haven't seen them. But uh, they will come out before the season gets here. And you will see some long-form thoughts from both of these experts. So all that to say, I really respect uh, these guys. I think they are really great at what they do. And I think nobody knows their teams better than the two of them do. So when they collaborate together, they bring their special powers together to uh, do something on Big Ten players. I think it's really worth listening to them and hearing what they have to say. So uh, their players list is out and there are some unique takeaways from it. We're going to do a short video on it uh, tomorrow. We'll record that so you can get our long form thoughts on some things on the list in general. I'm not going to reveal every single player on the list because you should go subscribe to UM Hoops and Inside the Hall to see the full list. But it did get me thinking of one specific angle here. Last summer, we did videos on this at the time. They collaborated, and we didn't have a relationship with these guys at this point. We might have covered it a little differently now that we do, but they left Braden Smith off the list, and we called it out at the time and said it was crazy. We were upset about it. Now, back then, it was just their top 25 players, not top 40, because there were less teams in the league, but they did not view Braden Smith coming into the season as a top 25 player in the league. Well, guess what? Fast forward a year later. They have Braden Smith as the number one player in all of Big Ten basketball for next season. So I think Alex and Dylan would tell you that they messed that one up and they've now corrected the ship. Uh, I want to do some thinking here and I want to come up with a player who could pull a Braden Smith. Who's a guy who is outside the projected top 25 players in the Big Ten for this season that a year from now, when we fast forward to 2025, could be number one on the Big Ten's best players countdown next year. So for this exercise, uh, we can either use Dylan and Alex's list, or we can use our own list since we have our own version of this as well. But just give me a guy who's outside the top 25 you think could end up being number one a year from now. Hmm. I'm going to go off their list just to give a, an, an ode to them actually, you know, I guess uh, uh, birthing this topic that we're going to have um now there's a couple of different ways you can go about this like my initial reaction i'm just walking through my thought process here i was thinking one of the purdue or indiana guys that are even outside of their top 50 they do not have cam heidi in their top 50 they do not have miles colvin in there also Cannon carlisle is not in there i think those are three players that could be very successful i don't know if those players are going to be able to make a jump enough or have enough talent to be number one like Braden smith so here's where I'm going to go with this, Gregory. And spoiler alert, you're going to like this. Daniel Wolf. Ooh. It is, Dan it is Daniel Wolf. Daniel Wolf has the size. He has the ability. He has the versatility to be a first-team All-Big Ten player, a Big Ten Player of the Year player. It's about whether he puts it together and maybe whether Michigan is successful enough. But if you're talking about pure skill, he's got two years left to play, too, on top of this. I don't think you can argue that he's a guy that could I, – I think inside the hall has him right in the 28, 30 range. I could see him making a, a jump, and maybe not next year, but maybe also next year, depending on how well he plays, he could find himself easily top 15, maybe even better. Yeah. That was one of three names that I circled, four names that I circled. Um, I'm glad you made the case because I didn't want to make the Homer case for it. But I, I do think Danny Wolf is a guy who will be like considered an all big 10 player a year from now when Vlad Golden leaves and like role opportunity, much like it works with Braden here of like, Oh, you're Zach Eady's sidekick to become, Oh, you're the centerpiece. That's probably going to happen with Danny Wolf. And I think that's exciting. Um, I'll return the favor. I'm going to give you two names from your team. Xavier Booker. On this list is, uh, let's see where they have him. They have Xavier Booker 36th in the Big Ten. Now, they do talk about why he could overperform this ranking, and it's good points, but uh, Xavier Booker is 36. Jeremy Fears is not in their top 40. I don't think either of those are improperly rated, for the record. Like, our, our rankings are going to come out, but I, I don't think they are lower on either Booker or Fears than we will be from our top 50. And 
Now you got to get a third year of Xavier Booker and you will get a third year of Jeremy fears. But I think if all goes to plan this year and those guys do take a leap forward, we're looking at guys who are expected to be all big 10 players next year. The hard part of this mental exercise is Braden Smith's going to return to Purdue. So you're, you're, if we're talking like who could be the number one player on the list, you got to be on paper as good as Braden Smith. And uh, spoiler alert, Danny Wolf and Jeremy Fears and Xavier Booker are not going to be as good as Braden Smith, no matter what they do this season. So right. maybe we should imagine a world where this is just like top five or or a world where Braden Smith is no longer at Purdue for whatever reason. Um, but I, I do think like I, out of Booker and Fears, I think there's actually a better chance that Fears – is the guy who is supposed to be a top five player in the league a year from now. Do you think I'm crazy for that? No, I I don't think you're crazy, especially because I think you are for sure guaranteed more time with fears. Fears is technically coming back. He's going to be a freshman next season or this season. So uh, uh, eligibility to go. I don't know. If the, I, I don't think there's the fear of him leaving early, right? Like I think we are going to get four years of Jeremy fears as well. Um, and look, if the scoring can come around, I think the passing is there. I think the intangibles are there. Um, obviously, he needs to clean some things up, get better as far as taking care of the ball. But uh, I do think that is a, a good shot for two guys uh, from from Michigan State's team. Did you? Who was the other one? Was it Danny Wolf? Uh, the other one on my list is Will Riley, who they have out of the top forty. Uh, they have out of the top forty. They have Will Riley and Derek Queen out of the top forty which we'll, we'll talk about in another video. But uh, I'm not, I'm not, to, to me, given that Will Riley reclassified, there's a chance where they convince Will Riley to come back. And if you get year two, Will Riley, I'm projecting that dude as a top 10 player in the conference for sure. So I you think, think they're going to get him back though. Probably not as long as he's good, but that's kind of, you're, you're banking on guys who have that level upside and there just aren't that many in the lower half of this. So you got to choose a guy like Will Riley, who again, to me, I would fight pretty harshly on Dylan and Alex here. There aren't that many five-star talents in this league. Like, we, we know Will Riley's going to play for a coach who consistently puts really good offenses on the floor. Like, it just feels like we're we're kind of overlooking the dude's talent to me. Now, they did. They bought into Kasparis, not as highly as we're buying into Kasparis. But it's interesting to me that Kasparis is high enough on their list and Will Riley's barely there. Um and then one other I just want to throw a shout to. Um, ooh, ooh, where was it? Oh, yeah. Uh, this one, I mean, it's highly unlikely, but given how they rated people here. Josh Dix is 38th on this list for Iowa. Peyton Sanford is second on their list. We're going we're gonna to have separate thoughts on that part in a moment, but if, if Peyton Sanford is second on the list, you're telling me a year from now Josh Dix couldn't be second? If you're going to pick an Iowa player, why not pick Owen Freeman, though? They picked Peyton Sanford. Because Owen Freeman's in their top 25, I think. Is he? I think. Oh, okay. I, th yeah. I thought he was just outside. I thought they had him at, like, 20, 20, like six. I thought he was in the top 25. Maybe not, but... That was mostly just a joke. I can't believe Sanford was picked second, man. That's crazy. <laughs> that, that's what, uh, we're not discussing it yet. You're right on the other video. I love it. Uh, shout out to Dylan and Alex. They did a great job with this list. Uh, you should go subscribe to both Inside the Hoops and UM, or sorry, Inside the Hall and UM Hoops. These guys do the most fantastic job with both of these teams.